A club is like a play or like a, if you go into performance. The, the decor, it, has, uh, it sets the tone of what, the place you go inside, you know, it completely sets the tone of what's going to happen inside of this place. There are these kind of intangible overall kind of impressions you get when you walk into a place right away. So the first impression when you walk in, you just go like, yes. If a room's designed correctly, it speaks to you and you're not looking around for people dancing on tables and sparklers and all that to kind of keep you interested in it. It has to take you someplace else. It has to at least allow you to forget about your troubles for that period of time. It transports you, it makes you forget where you came from and focus on where you might go. The best night is like you go out and you end up, you know, maybe on a plane to Paris with a beautiful girl. You want to set the stage for that. But then it's not enough. Like in a, a play or a film, it's not enough to make a great decor. You have to have a good direction, you have to have good music. You know, every element counts. Everything, where it is, what it is, who's going there, what's the reason why they should go there. Who's in the room, how's the lighting, how's the music, how's the energy. There has to be loud areas, and there has to be quiet areas. There has to be lit areas, and there has to be dark areas. You just can't, you know, create an environment that is one thing. Getting some new stuff every once in a while, but it, there's, there has to be a com enough of a comfort level. I know what this is about. I know that I can sit here. I sort of fit in, but I don't know everything about this place. Clubs are designed, no matter what you do, I think, to have a shelf life. The nature of nightlife is that it never lasts. Clubs are so much based on what's happening next. We invited five designers in New York and they come from different design disciplines. A group of young, talented people cross-fertilizing each other and all infusing it into this club idea. A kind of vision of the future club. The special thing about it is to do that with young talent from around the world. Getting the opportunity to design a full club in which we have the freedom to experiment, in which we can collaborate with all these young people who will come up, of course, with ideas that we wouldn't have thought of. It's like a dream for any designer. The first challenge is how do you take all of these designers that have individually really strong ideas and sort of bring them together in a way that doesn't feel like you walk into a space and it feels like 20 people have designed it. My name is Lee Gibson, I'm an interior designer. I really like how New York is a super densely populated place and I like going out and seeing how the environment right outside my door completely changes from one day to the next. I'm studying interior design at Parsons, uh, my MFA. I'm coming from an architecture degree, having experience in product and graphics, trying to think about how all these things come together. I think as a designer, it's almost the most important thing that you can do, actually going out there and making and designing things. Trying to be productive all the time and coming up with new ideas. And you learn a lot when you don't know what you're doing is when you, again, a corny thing to say. But as a designer, when you don't know what you're doing, it's like if you did know what you were doing, what's the point of being there? So many of those learning experiences along the way, where you just you try something out and you realize it's, you know, this isn't working. The most important thing is function. If it does not function, it is nothing. I need a shelf and I'm gonna put it here, you know, because I ran out of space and I need to put this hot sauce here. But somehow in the end, the composition somehow just seems to magically add up really crisp perfect. Form is great, function is much more important. Making something that looks really cool, uh, especially like in a club setting, for example, it's fun. I think that when you try to tell a story or you try to engage someone and make it interactive, I think that's when it really becomes exciting to me. My name is Phil Sirzega. I'm a motion designer, interactive designer. I've worked at a bunch of different shops that kind of do motion, animation heavy interactive experiences. I've always wanted to take on projects that let me have a conversation with someone. So you're putting something out there, but you get feedback from a person who's experiencing it. So putting a projection on the wall is fine. It's all well and good. But if, if there's a way to have it interact with someone, 
in the space. It's a much more intriguing challenge to me. I'd like to help design something that's sort of forward thinking and sort of exciting and new using technology in a new way. I think that using technology, you can solve a lot of problems that a club has. I'm Sandra Garcia, and I'm doing the graphic design. When I go out, I don't care that much about the design. I care about the experience. I care about meeting people, about having fun. It's not only about the space, about the decoration. It's what you get from it. I feel uncomfortable right now because I don't feel like a designer. You know, I'm not a designer. When I'm concepting, I don't think about how it's going to look like. I think about how can I offer that is going to be different. A better experience that solves a problem is not that difficult. But, I mean, it's difficult to come up with the idea. <laughs> you make up things that doesn't exist. You use up things that people not, would usually use, you know. Turning things on their head is always you know, important to think about and not the status quo, you know, and, and it's, it's always contextual. It, it depends on what's going on at the moment. I really love nightlife and I was going out all the time. I love getting people together, but I wasn't seeing what I wanted to when I went out to the nightclubs. I would just kind of sit there on the wall thinking about how it could be better. And I decided that I wanted to kind of create the ultimate party. My name is Adam Alexander. I'm a New York based experiential designer. Experience design is crafting an entire evening. You know, whether it's like an enchanted forest or Marie Antoinette's boudoir or like some futuristic exhibition hall. I think of one central theme and the theme is really important from the moment that people get the first invitation to when they show up at the venue, like what's happening outside the venue, to when you go to the bar, the dance floor, the music, everything that I create is under that central unified theme. It's not like a pop-up nightclub, it's like a pop-up world. But it's extra special because it only exists for one night. Telling a story from beginning to end, you're trying to bring people to your world. Casting the actors for a play to come into the club in, in a very extreme way. And even I don't think a place is done and then people come in. I think a place is done and then the people coming in make the place evaluate and be something. There might be outrageous dressers, you know, that look amazing, not just incredibly beautiful, but maybe they look outrageous. You want to encourage those people to be there because it makes it m more interesting for everybody else. I've always thought that fashion could be a lot more than it is, so what I'm really trying to bring is something that people can interact with that can really enhance the environment itself. I'm Michelle Wu and I'm a fashion designer. I get a lot of inspiration from being hands-on, cutting, sewing, dyeing, being experimental, I like that trial and error process. I think that's what I really like about fashion. You, you get to actually touch the things that you're making and change it and adapt it based on how you're feeling sometimes. It makes it a really personal experience and more of an art form. I'm thinking a lot about trying to enhance the beauty of women or the beauty of men without it being so painful. Bringing fashion into making the whole going out experience a little bit better for people. There are very, very few people out there who understand the whole range of things necessary. Because if it works well, then it is good. But until you get to that point, it's hard. People misjudge it all the time, but they end up worrying about something that's fundamentally not that important. I really think that like the, uh, architects and designers will never design a good, functioning nightclub. They don't know how it runs. We didn't know at all what this is going to bring. The brief was extremely open. We invite people from around the world that we don't know. You kind of open up and are ready to be surprised. So it's a risk. On the other hand, we're there to experiment and to see what comes out of that. You have to try to design something that's timeless to the best of your ability and avoid any kind of thought process that focuses on what's next. I don't know what the future of nightlife is, but it will surprise us and it will give fresh impulses. These trends, these needs, social trends keep changing and each generation has its time.